What's up guys? <laughs> Welcome to Laser Everything. We have something really important, something really super cool to share with you today. We are launching the Laser Everything Community Fiber Laser Parameter System. big deal. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time. Special shout out to Amanda, who's put a ridiculous amount of work into this. Uh, special shout out to Kyle, who's gone above and beyond making sure that things make sense to us laser users and, you know, uh, things work the way that they're supposed to work and do what they're supposed to do. I'm going to show you guys how it works, but first I just kind of want to talk a little bit about the goal here. So the fiber laser community parameter library is supposed to be a place where anyone can go and drop a setting for other people to, so that they can get use out of it. And we've gotten very, very specific with our categorizing of things to make sure that if you find a setting for your machine, it's an exact match to your setup. And we're, we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. This certainly doesn't replace the LMA parameter library, which is still an awesome pack of like get started settings. And it's again, pre-converted for every wattage and lens. Kyle has put innumerable hours into making that possible for everybody to uh, enjoy over on the LMA. So it's not a, it's not a replacement. It's more of a, like an Supplement. addition. Supplemental, yeah. Uh, and we're we're really excited to, to put this in your guys' hands. I've been thinking about this for a really long time. Uh, we've been a little nervous to do it, uh, but I think that it's what's best for the community. And Laser Everything is what it is today because we always did what was best for the community first and everything else second. So, you know, while a little nerve wracking, I truly believe that making this system available for you guys is the right thing to do. And uh, I know the community is going to step up and support us just like they always have. So we can continue making videos for you, doing lessons and tutorials and providing communities and support and everything else that Laser Everything does. So with that said, I think we can go take a look at it. But Matt, Kyle, do you guys have anything to add? I was just going to um, say shout out to Kyle, like you had said, because he figured out this whole thing in his mind, conceptualized it, put it all together, made it. I think it's pretty slick. And then like uh, between he and Alex, because I literally just found out about this, I think like a week ago. And then they were like, try it out. And I was like, it works. It's really cool. Okay, Boop. There it is. Uh, so here it is, guys. It's lasereverything.net. It's just our website. We're just adding another tool to the resources that we try to offer to you guys. So if we click resources here, the last thing on here, the new edition, uh, says fiber laser settings. So right now, this system is only for fiber laser settings. Other lasers will come in the future. But if we click fiber laser settings, and of course, if you need UV settings or CO2 Galvo settings or diode settings or whatever, the LMA still exists. Those libraries aren't as fleshed out as the fiber laser parameter library on the LMA, but they exist. So here it is, this is it. This is all there is to it. It's very simple. We're hoping it's going to be a lot more full in a very short amount of time. Kyle and I will be continuing to add to it. We just, we had a bunch of test ones that were fake settings in there like 10 minutes before this stream. So we just deleted them all and Kyle threw like three in really quick before we started the stream. So it's it's very, very easy to use. So LE Community Fiber Parameter, uh, LE Community Fiber Parameter Library, free, re good, good reminder right here, free resources like this library are made possible because of our community. Show your support by signing up for the Laser Master Academy. If you guys aren't already a member over there, go check it out. It's masters.lasereverything.net. It funds everything we do here. Everything. Uh, it's such a big list, and I always rattle the list off. I'm not going to rattle the list off. Every single thing we do here, we do because we have so many supporters over at the LMA. So if you're not signed up, please consider going to do that. Uh, you can find out more at masters, again, .lasereverything.net. Use this form to contribute to the fiber parameter library. We will check that out in a minute. And then we have a few drop downs here and a list. Uh, so right now the community library is only three settings. So we don't really need to sort for settings, but I'm hoping we will very quickly. And you can see uh, there's a title field, the uploader, 
Make sure you use the same name every time. People will remember you. They'll be like, oh, my God, Andrew F. Andrew F. keeps dropping the best settings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so oh, uh, you want to make sure you, you use that same name. Yeah. Laser source brand, source model. And these are important. We will talk about those more when we get to the form. Material, frequency, speed, power, the lens field size, and the picture, right? Just a little picture so you can see. Now, this isn't the full story. This is just for finding a setting that you want to look further into. So if I'm on the hunt for a, let's say a JPT setting with a M7 100 watt source, and I want something for brass, I can hit search and Kyle's brass general setting for M7 100 watt lasers shows up. The nice thing is I know exactly what lens he used. We made these required fields. So you have to input them in order to add a setting. We actually get more information than what is on the main screen here. So if I click Brass General, we actually get a full breakdown of the parameter, including notes from the person who uploaded it. So we still have the brand, the model. Uh, now we're finding out the software, okay? So we can see if this was done in Lightburn or EasyCAD. We can see the parameter type. Is it an engrave, a cut? Is it a photo setting, right? That has dither options, things like that. And again, we'll talk more about that in a minute. We're seeing the lens field size still, frequency, power, speed. Uh, if there is a hatch angle, we have the hatch angle in here as well. Line spacing, a vital thing, right? We have to know the line spacing in order for these yep. settings to work. If we don't account for line spacing, our settings are not going to function the way this person's <laughs> telling you they're going to. So we need to make sure we pay attention to that. A few notes, hatch type right now, the hatch types are based on EasyCAD, but we are implementing light burn hatch options. So whether you have the flood fill box checked or you're doing unidirectional or bi-directional. Other things from EasyCAD still apply in Lightburn, like the hatch angle, right? So we don't need to make changes for that when selecting Lightburn, but that's why you can select Lightburn when depositing a setting. And we're gonna take a look at that in just a second. But for right now, they are all EasyCAD hatch pictures, but they work for now. We will have that resolved in like 24 to 48 hours. So just a note on that. Always check the field notes, right? Uh, there's notes here uh, just based on what the person was doing when they were doing it. Maybe they defocused, you know, maybe it's defocused 10 millimeters. We don't know. So that kind of area where it would be like, okay, we're going to have 50 million drop downs. The notes section is here to help guide you to landing the same result as the person who submitted the setting. Uh, and that's it. So you get like a full readout on the setting, not just the actual setting itself. And uh, just to kind of show again, for anybody who's just joining us, uh, this is the Ellie Community Fiber Parameter Library where anybody can input a setting to help out their, their fellow engravers. We're very, very excited about it. Yep, so let's check out the submission form. So here it is. It, it's a lot, it's overwhelming at first, uh, but we're gonna break it down. It's actually very straightforward. It, it looks chaotic, chaotic, but it is information that you deal with on literally every setting you'll ever deal with. If you have your own Lightburn library, for example, you already deal with this on every parameter that you've ever used. So it's yeah. it's nothing crazy. But for yeah. title, we're just going to give it a generic title. So maybe we'll call this Aluminum General, right? And it's just a general aluminum setting. We just use it on Aluminum General and you put your name in. So I'm going to put in Ellie Alex, be consistent with Kyle. And uh, we need to pick a laser source model yeah. and software. So we're doing a laser source brand here, right? So for this setting, we actually need to, I'm glad you mentioned that Kyle. We don't have IPG. We need to add IPG. We also need to do GZ Tech. It's in our list. So, Focused on the big three to start. Yep. Uh, and this is the settings for a 30 watt laser. So I know my source is an LP 30 watt. It's not a MOPA. This is a setting from the original Mactron. So it's a 30 watt LP source. I know that. So I can click LP 30 watt. Software, I developed this setting in EasyCAD. So I'm gonna select EasyCAD. Parameter type, are we cutting, engraving, marking, or doing a photo? Now, if I select cut, it's not doing it right now, but line spacing is actually gonna disappear because line spacing doesn't have anything to do with cuts. If I select photo, it gives us new option here for dither type, right? So 
You can make sure you're matching the dither type with other people. You have your photo settings there and then your material, right? So we're just gonna select a material. Mine is an engraving setting. So I'm actually gonna select engrave and mark. For material, it's gonna be aluminum. For the lens and field size, we're just gonna pick the size of the lens it was developed on. This was developed for a 110 lens. Frequency, what's the frequency? 25, power, 80, and speed. This is in millimeters per second, guys. For global compatibility, this will be matched. So if you use Imperial for your laser marking software, you're going to have to convert it before you import it or it will not work. So for speed, we're going a thousand millimeters a second. And then for the angle, zero, we're not doing any weird angles. We could do a 45 degree cross hatch or whatever, but it's just, we're trying to keep it simple today. Line spacing, I believe is 0 0.025 millimeters and pulse. The LP30 watt uses a 200 pulse width, which again is very standard for machines where you can't change the pulse width. Loops, uh, you can just do infinite. So I guess I'll just hit one. And then for picture, so you have to look, picture is required here. We have to upload a picture. So I'm actually gonna have to go grab a photo really quick of when I've used the aluminum general, which is easy enough to do. So, uh, so we've got our photo uploaded now. Hatch type, this is just a unidirectional hatch. I'm actually gonna, I, I think we like alternating 45. So I'm gonna put the uh, 45 degree hatch on there. Uh, notes, cross hatched. Run as many times as you'd like for the desired depth. That's it, boom, easy. And with that selected and our notes field filled out, I can hit submit. And then it's gonna do something here, uh, which is actually interesting. So if approved, it will appear in the LE Community Fiber parameter library shortly. So we are actually going to kind of curate these. So if somebody comes in and they add 50 settings called butt and it's just zeros and they're trying to be a jerk, we can make sure that those actually don't make it into the <laughs> into the library. I know you would do that. Matthew, um, I wouldn't do it, then, but I, I would laugh a little bit. I'm not <laughs> yeah, and then um, I'm actually gonna go into the back end really quick and approve that. So I'm gonna come in to the fiber laser settings now. And here it is, guys, Aluminum General, uploaded by me. We can see the LP30 watt, aluminum, all of the settings. There's our picture. We'll click on Aluminum General, and there is the advanced information, our hatch information, our notes. It's all there, including a full-size picture, which was really important to me. I wanted, like, nice big pictures so we could actually see what these settings do. So make sure you upload high-quality images. And that is it. That is the workflow. I think that's all I've got. Do you guys have anything? Hope everybody has a beautiful weekend and a great holiday and happy birthday to Diego. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the parameter library and uh, we'll see you really, really soon. Good night.